What's up, Real Life family? We are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. We're excited because we know that all it takes is one encounter with God to change your whole life, and we believe that day could be today. We would love it if you would share this experience. Click the share button or copy the link and send it to a friend. Also, be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay connected to your Real Life family. Well, it's about time to get started. Thanks again for joining us. Good morning. Welcome back. I want to welcome our campuses, our online church. Love you guys. And it's Baptism Sunday, and it's already been amazing. This is one of my favorite things that we do as a church, and we get to celebrate as the body. We watch people take the plunge and make the commitment that Jesus is Lord, and really cool things happen. And so Baptism Sunday, it's a new beginning for so many people, and we just started a series that's called Free Me. Free Me from anything, God, that would hold me back from the life, the full life that you have for me. John 10, 10, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the what? Full. If I were to offer you a partial paycheck on Friday, would you get excited? Eh, Not really. I'd like the full thing, right? If I were to offer you a glass of water on a hot day and I said I could give you just a little bit, you'd be like, no, I'd rather have you fill it all the way. If I'm telling you you could come here and have a half full life, that's what most people are living. Jesus said, no, I didn't come to offer you a half full life, a three quarters full, a drop. I'm, I'm offering you life to the full. And so what we need to do is ask and invite God to get rid of anything that would keep us from that free and full life that he has for us. Today we're talking about, Lord, free me from my past. Don't let my past keep me from your purpose. That's our prayer today. And this is a good one for baptism weekend, because really baptism is about that new beginning, that fresh start. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, he says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. Isn't it cool how baptism actually reflects the death of Like we died to our sins and our old self were buried with him in the water. And then just as in, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, it says we too may live a new life. There's that promise again. He promises us a new life, a fresh start. And I think we want that life. The problem is so many of us stay stuck in the past. And we're haunted and we're hurting and we're holding on to things that God wants to heal us from. He's calling us out of that and he's willing to do it. He wants to do it. I believe he's waiting to be invited to do it. And so this series is a prayer. Free me. It's a call to action and it's an invitation to God to do the thing he already wants to do. We're inviting the one who says he began a good work to come and carry it to completion. All right. And so when we talk about getting free from our past, I was thinking about this. There's a couple camps really that people fall into very distinct camps. And I think the first group of people, and maybe you fall into this, a lot of people I talk to do. Uh, When we talk about getting free from our past, there's this group of people who tend to think that the best is behind them. You hear them talk. Well, in my day, you know, when I was your age, well, you just wait. That's my favorite. Some kind of curse. They're pronouncing on everybody. Uh, you know, oh, are you starting to feel some pain in the morning? No, actually, I feel good. Well, you just wait. Oh, God. Thank you for making it sound so pleasant, right? Like, everybody's just, they, they've got this negative mentality. And I think so many people, when they talk about the old days, we like to gloss over the bad and we like to glamorize the good and, you know, the good old days. Don't, we sometimes refer to the past as the good old days, you know, the glory days. If you were an athlete and you had some accomplishments, but it's, it's greener pastures back there. And, and the truth is, in Christ, the best is yet to come. What it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can even imagine the things that God has in store for those who love him. 
Praise God. The best isn't behind us. It's still to come. Isaiah 43, God says, forget the former things. You got some things back there. Great. The highlights, whatever. Forget those. Don't dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. What's ahead is far better than what's behind if you're in Christ. And so we keep going. We have to resist the urge to believe the lie that the best is behind us. And this, it's really not about age, by the way. I was talking to someone this week uh, on the occasion of his 35th birthday. He began to tell me how old he is and how old he feels. And how, now he's, so he's a rapper, professional rapper, been in the rap industry a long time, has some platinum hits. So, but there's this, he, here's what he said to me. He goes, in my industry, 35 is old. And you got to understand, when we were starting our careers, we would make fun of people. He goes, I actually used the age 35 to make, I'm like, what's that dude? He's trying to put out music. What's he still, what's he like, 35? And he goes, now I am 35. He goes, it just feels like it's all downhill for me. I'm like, bro, I got to hang up because you're making me depressed. If you're old, I'm Methuselah. I just celebrated my 50th birthday. I said, but here's the difference. I feel young. I feel good. I can touch my toes without oxygen. You know, praise God. It's, it's there. I'm like, I feel like there's so much ahead of me. So here's, I said, here's what I want you to understand. I don't think it's your age. I think it's your attitude. I think you need to shift your attitude and align it with God's truth that there's still more in store for you. There's so much ahead of you. I actually had a, an older, significantly older pastor recently spoken to my life. And he said, I just want you to know that you probably feel like, you know, there's a lot behind you and that you've accomplished. He goes, the best is still to come. The best years of my ministry. This is a successful pastor where I, I started them when I was a little older than you. I'm like, oh, I'm like, praise God. That feels good to hear that, right? Somebody out ahead of you going, you're just entering into the sweet spot of your life. Thank you, Lord. The best is yet to come. Thank God I'm a pastor, not a rapper. Can I get a hip hop, hippity hip hop? God don't stop. There we go. See, told you I'm a pastor, not a rapper. You're welcome. I want to encourage you too, if you are getting older in life, that as you read through the Bible, you, you see that God does some of his best work with people who are older in years. Moses didn't get his start until he was 80. Like he had a 40 year time out. How about that? And God's like, hey, let's, let's get going now. And you're like, get going now. I'm out. <laughs> this is shuffleboard season. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Abraham, like God's promise didn't come to him until he was old, old. Joseph was an old man when God's fulfillment in his life. It's a beautiful thing that God is still working in our lives, even when we're older. And I, I was thinking about my grandfather. My grandparents on my dad's side lived to a very ripe old age. My, we lost my grandma a couple years ago. She was 101 years old, 101. And so when people tell me I'm middle-aged, I'm like, no, I'm not. I got five more months. Not till I'm 50 and a half, right? If I'm doing the math right. Thank you, Grandma. She's out there. She's definitely a statistical anomaly, but 101. My grandfather lived till he was around 95, 96 years old. And in his 90s, he was still walking the halls of his retirement facility and the hospital where many of his friends were praying for them, encouraging them and their families. And he and my grandmother would write cards and notes of encouragement to people. I'm like, God was still using them in their 90s. And I'm like, I'm so far from being there, but God has so much more in store for me. I need people to believe that today. And some of you came here not believing that God has more in store for me. Got it. I need you to say it. If you believe it, God has more in store for me. I need you to say it. If you don't believe it, because you're the one that needs to hear it the most. God has more in store for me. It's not over. There's still, here's how I know, by the way, that God still has more in store for you. Pinch yourself, make it hurt. You feel the pain? That means you're still alive. I wondered why I have so much pain in my life. Yep, those are just reminders that you're still here and that God still has a plan and a purpose. If you're still here, God's still moving. God's still working. If, if he didn't have anything else for you, he would just take you home. I feel like, and, and so as Christians, sometimes when we think it's all just about us and our journey and that we're not here to do something, we're, what we want so often is God to free us from something. It's interesting. God frees us from things so he can free us to things. 
He frees us from our past so that he can free us for his purpose. And, and you're still here. That means God still has a plan for your life. Otherwise, so it's baptism weekend. Love baptism weekend. And if all God wanted to do was free you from your past, praise God, that would be awesome. But when, you know, what's your good confession? Jesus is Lord. Amen. It'd be like SpaceX in the baptistry pool. There they go. Praise God. They're free now. They're home. God freed them from their past and took them straight home to heaven because there was nothing else for them here. Wouldn't that be cool? It would be cool to see a couple human launches on baptism Sunday. Boom. I mean, Jesus ascended into the heavens, you know, in a cloud. So it's possible. But he leaves us here because he doesn't just want to free us from our past, but he frees us for a purpose and a plan. The best isn't behind us. The best is yet to come. Philippians chapter three, Paul says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I'm not there yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. As believers, we're not looking backwards. We're looking forwards. We're not just looking forwards. He says we're looking heavenward. We're looking up and to Jesus. And we keep going. We're forgetting what's behind. We're straining towards what is ahead because it's better. It's good. Okay, so that's one camp. You think the best days are behind you and you're wrong. There's this other camp. And there's a bunch of us that because of our past, because of who we were and what we did, we're ashamed of our past. And we wish we're waiting for them to invent time travel so we can go back and delete all the photos, right? Tear up all the yearbooks, maybe wear a different outfit to senior picture day. Am I right? Does anybody have like awkward yearbook photos when you go back to your past and you look and your mom still shows people? Isn't it amazing how mothers, they're proud of pictures that we want to burn. Um, I, think, I think the yearbook, sometimes it, it kind of symbolizes a different life for those of us who have aged a bit. And uh, I was blessed by God recently to come into uh, contact in possession of a few beautiful yearbook pictures of some people that you may recognize. I want to celebrate this with you. That first one's actually me, so um, I was, that was a vote for Pedro campaign that I was in right there. You gotta love that mustache, right? What, would somebody have just told me, oh, Chuck, you see Pastor Chuck? Frosted tips? Pastor and a rapper, dun 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 That's Chuck Chuck, baby. Who we got next? Oh my. Pastor Daniel, raising the bar and raising eyebrows. Come on. <laughs> Woo. Pastor Mark. Why so serious? Was it test day? What was going on, man? He's <laughs> like, picture day. Come on, let's go. Take it. Take it. You were, in, you were focused, weren't you? You're were focused. This guy was driven. I love the intensity. And then, of course, we have Pastor Mike G from Orlando. Looks the same. He looks the same. He has a slight mustache now, though. That's awesome. Um, when you look back, though, think about this. I know because some of us are working hard to keep the past in the past for good reason, because what's back there isn't really that great. We're not proud of it. I want you to know today that when you make Jesus Lord in the present, that's a decision you can make today. It's the day of salvation. Now is the time of the Lord's favor. If you make Jesus Lord in the present, he forever changes your future and he even reconciles and redeems your past. That's why first, second Corinthians five seventeen it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. And first John one, nine, it says, if we confess our sins, by the way, God doesn't just forgive them uh, magic. We come to God and we ask and we confess because we acknowledge our need for him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 103, so far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Whew. This is good news for those of us who weren't always good people. I love the communion set up today, Pastor Mark, when you were talking about like, we remember him because he doesn't remember our sin. He chooses not to. We remember him because he forgets. 
Thank you, God. He keeps no memory of our sin. That's an incredible promise. Usually, okay, when I'm talking to people who have messed up in their past, which by the way is what percentage of us? It's like, it's 99.99. Jesus throws the average off a little bit. If you look at human history, there's that one anomaly. If you take Jesus out, it's 100%. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us like sheep have gone astray and turned to our own way. So 100% of us sin and fail, but some sin feels heavier. Some sin hangs or sits on us differently. And, And to be honest with you, Even many of us who believe God forgives our sins still sometimes choose to walk in shame. My sin's been forgiven, but I haven't also allowed Jesus to remove the shame. And so I'm walking with this shame. And and I'll have people tell me, Pastor, you know, I hear you just don't understand. You don't know what I've done and what I where I've been. You don't know uh, how bad it was. And usually what I'll tell people is I don't know how bad it was, but I will tell you it's probably not much worse than the guy that God used to write most of the New Testament. You know the Apostle Paul? I've quoted him several times today already, by the way. But he was originally Saul. And Saul was a persecutor of the church. He was opposed to everything Jesus. He was killing Christians 100% against Jesus until he met Jesus. And then Jesus radically and totally transformed his life. And so Saul becomes the Apostle Paul. He lives to declare the gospel that he used to live to destroy. God has an incredible track record of using people with a broken past. And I want you to hear this because the way uh, Paul saw his own story, okay? The way he would tell his story was that God didn't just use him in spite of his past, but check this out. 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners... That's the gospel. We know that he says, of whom I am the worst, but not in spite of that, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Your past doesn't disqualify you, but it displays him. That's a big deal. Your past doesn't have to disqualify you, but it can display God, his patience, his power. You are a showcase of grace. That's what God wants you to be, a poster kid for his goodness. He basically wants people to look at you because, you know, God's in a worldwide marketing campaign right now, and some of us aren't helping him out because we don't always think right. We don't always Facebook well. We don't always show up with the right, but he's in a worldwide marketing campaign to let the world know who he is and how much he loves them. And so this is his message. What he wants to be able to do is point to you and me and go, see, if I can use him, if I can choose her, if I can save him, if I can send her, then there's got to be hope for you. He saves us to make a point. We're not saved because of us. We're saved because of him in spite of us. But even in light of our past, God likes to take it and go, check this out. You thought that was bad. Watch what I can do. Your past doesn't have to disqualify you, but it can display him. I just want you to understand a lot of people will believe a lie that because you were and you did that now you can't. It's not true. Don't believe the lie that because you were and you did that you can't. Your past doesn't have to disqualify you. It can actually display the glory of God. For those of you who have messed up and you feel like, I don't belong here. I don't deserve to be here. I'm ashamed of. Your past is really just proving God's power. Your past, the way uh, Paul would say it, my past is proving God's patience so that everyone can look at me and say, if he can do it for that guy, right? Then he can do it for me. First Corinthians chapter one. This is interesting to me. If, if anybody did show up here today feeling like this church is lucky to have me, you know, I, I could have gone to any church today and I chose this one. You're welcome. Here's what Paul says in verse 26. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. 
But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Well, I did this or, you know, it's because I was able to No, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness and redemption. It's all him. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. I want to do that for a minute. If you'll let me, I want to boast in the Lord, because when I look back on my life, whoo, can I just tell you? Like if you showed up here today wondering, I don't know if there's any hope for me. I don't know. I just want to testify. I've been a pastor for a long time. I wasn't born one. I think that's an interesting thing about pastors. Nobody's born one. Um, My life sometimes can look good to people in this season. You could show up and go, oh yeah, I mean, he can talk about that. But I mean, he's got a good marriage. He's got a good family. Like, you know, must be nice. Kind of got his stuff together. And you're looking at the after picture. Okay, you ever seen a before and an after picture? They send them to me all the time on Instagram. I'm like, am I really that out of shape that you can tell on the other side of the computer? Like, stop, that's insulting. I think my starting point's a little better than that. But you know, the before pic and the after pic, the after pic always looks a lot better than the before pic. I'm saying, if you're looking at the after pic of what God did, you gotta go back and look at the yearbook pic before God did it, right? That year, in fact, the yearbook pic that I showed you Right around that same time in my life is when I started working for the church, but not as a pastor. Uh, I actually, my first job at this church was court ordered community service because I had been arrested for shoplifting. So, hey, started at the bottom, now we here. (laughs) Rapper and pastor. (laughs) First job at the church, I'm out there painting parking posts you know, uh, to satisfy the court. I can tell you right now, none of the church people driving by or showing up to the office during the week were going, hey, look at that young man. Very ambitious. He'll be our next pastor. That was not the rumor circulating about my life in that season. Nobody thought that. God knew. I didn't know. He didn't tell, but he loves to do that kind of thing, doesn't he? He takes our mess, turns it into a message. He takes our pain and our past and he uses it for his purpose. Don't let your past keep you from God's promise. Only you can do that, by the way. Only you can choose to stay chained to your trauma and stay a prisoner of your past. God wants to free you and he's calling you out of it. Don't let your past keep you from his purpose for your life. He's calling us forward, onward, and what Paul says in Philippians 3, heavenward. We're up and to the right. He has so much more for you. You go from glory to glory in Christ. And I want to testify, by the way, that God didn't just forgive my past. He does so much more. He does that thing we need him to do. And then he throws in some bonuses. You know, if you call now, if you act now, it's baptism Sunday. If you come forward today, he'll also throw in. Listen to this part of my story, because later on I went to get a job and they feel you got to fill out forms and you got to disclose information on that resume. You know what I'm saying? They're like, have you ever been arrested? I mean, like, I mean, arrested. What are we talking about here? So you got to, and so I fill this out and and then they go and they come back to me and say, Hey, uh, you, it's marked. Yes. That you'd been arrested. We searched and we couldn't find any record of that. Do you want to tell us about that? And I was like, no, (laughs) don't actually, if you can't find it, why would I tell you? So I I had to do some research and I'm like, Hey, I'm asking my parents. I'm like, what, what happened? I thought I had to check. They said, Oh, that was actually, um, because you had satisfied the court and all the requirements. And because you were a minor that Uh, criminal offense was expunged. That was the legal term they used, expunged from your record. It was erased. It was eliminated. And now nobody can go and find it. And I was like, what? (laughs) Praise God. That's an amazing thing. And as I thought about that part of my story, I realized like, that's what Jesus does. He doesn't just forgive the past, but as far as the East is from the West, they never meet, by the way. They never come together. It's gone. He says he buries it in the depths of the sea. It it says in Hebrews that he remembers it no more. It's erased from the permanent record. It's gone. No one can ever use it or bring it up against you. It has no power. Listen, that's good news for some of us today. Your past has no power against you today in the present. If you are in Christ, God's purpose for your life is always greater than your past. Colossians 
chapter two, it says it like this. Colossians two, verse 13, it says, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. He doesn't just take it away. Listen, he turns it around. Can anybody testify that that's true of your life? He doesn't just take it away. He turns it around for your good and for his glory. He does more than you could ask or imagine. Here's something cool about my story, okay? Because I realized what Jesus does, he, he goes above and beyond, and it's, it's personal. It's irreversible, but um, not only was you know the debt paid and then it was erased, but the place that I stole from is actually now a church. How cool is that? They went out of business. I don't think there's any connection there, by the way. I don't think. How dare you arrest a future pastor? I don't think that was it. I think they made some decisions. You know, Kmart, you can study it. Anyway, so, but the place that I was arrested is actually now a church where in my life there used to be a little cross on the side of the road. Man, that's where you messed up. God said, now there's a church where that was the place of your sin and your shame. Now it's a place of salvation for many. I'm like, God, that's just too much. It's too personal. It's too beautiful. Your past has no power over God's promise. Your past has no power against God's purpose for your life. And where we want to run from our past, God wants us redeemed from our past. Where we want to hide from the past, God invites us to be healed from the past. We want to forget the past. God wants to free us from the past because he wants to free us for his purpose. We're not just freed from, we are freed for. And so often, listen, your life won't make sense until you start following Jesus. All that stuff in the past just feels like frustration and problem and pain. And it doesn't make sense until you surrender all of it to Jesus and you start pursuing his purpose for your life. And then all of a sudden, you're like, that's why that happened. That's why I was allowed to go through that. That's why I, experienced, I had to go through that to speak to that. Later, David would say, I, I had to fight the lion and the bear so I'd be ready for Goliath, right? I had to go through some things. I'm like, that's a very optimistic way to look at a bear attack, by the way, isn't it? <laughs> well, this is just another thing I got to go through because there's something worse ahead. That's not super encouraging when you're fighting a bear, when you're fighting a lion. He said, those were just little things because now God's preparing me for the big thing. But what I've learned about God is that so often our purpose that he has for us our purpose is connected to our pain. The reason he needs me freed from my past is because I'm being freed for a purpose. And so often my purpose is connected in some way to my pain. Moses would have to go back and confront the Pharaoh that he had run from and free the people that had rejected him. Joseph would have to save the family that sold him into slavery. You can't do that unless you're free. He was free. He was free from that past so he could be freed for that purpose. Zacchaeus had to go back and pay. He was paying four times as much of the people he had ripped off, and that's what he was known for doing. You got to be free to do that. Saul became Paul, had to go back and preach to the people he persecuted. Got to be free to do that. So many people I know, God sent them back. This is an interesting thing. I don't know what his plans are for you, but I know my friend Annie, God had to set her free from her past so he could free her for his purpose. And she started a ministry. She used to be um, in the sex industry, prostitute, call girl. She's told her story here at the church before and, and God freed her out of that life, but he sent her back. And now she has a ministry called Hookers for Jesus. Remember that, Hookers for Jesus? Because we're fishers of men, there's a hook. My Baptists are like, I don't know, pastor. <laughs> I question the name, but I like the purpose, right? <laughs> Hookers for Jesus, she's going back. And we are set free to set others free. She's going back and rescuing them. She was freed from the past so she could be sent back because she's freed for his purpose. My friend Ryan, who used to throw these hip hop festivals and get bonged out of his mind, he had to be freed from that so he could be freed to go back to that. And now he's back in those places, free from the drugs and the addiction, and he can minister to the people in the lifestyle. It's amazing. Uh, my, my friend Mike, 
spent years of his life in prison, messed up big time, and, you know, resisted the urge to believe the lie that now, you know, the best is behind you and your whole life will be different. And as a free man, once he got out, the Lord sent him back to prison. And he has one of the largest prison ministries in the United States today. He went back to prison to set others free in the name of Jesus. And it's a beautiful thing. I'm just saying, so often your purpose is connected to your pain in some way. And the reason God has to free you from your past is because he's freeing you for his purpose. I don't know what he has for you. I don't know what he's planning for you. He says it's good. He's calling you forward, heavenward. I know whatever it is, it starts with you being free. And I think for so many of us, Freedom is about what voice are you listening to? You know what I'm talking about? Those voices in your head, the self-talk. The, and I'm not even sure it's always self-talk. It's literally like a war in your mind sometimes. What voice are you going to listen to? Because the enemy's speaking. He roars like a lion. He's the one speaking really loud. You've got to learn to hear that still, soft voice of God. The enemy wants to, he, he wants to say that you're your mistakes. I know what you did, and if they knew, and if they ever found out, and you're not your mistakes, you're not your flaws, you're not your failures, you're not your sins, you're loved, you're chosen, you've been redeemed, you were bought at a price, you were called out, you're worth dying for, he's preparing a place for you, he's coming back for you, you have a hope and a future, the enemy wants to bring up the past to keep you locked up, Jesus reminds you of your future to keep you living free, it's good. It's good. Keep coming. You have to take every thought captive to Christ and say, nope, I'm not that thing that I did. I'm not that person I was. Your past has no power in God's presence. It's one of the gifts he offers. You know, when we come to him, make him Lord, we're baptized into him. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. We have it all the time. Greater is he that is in you than the one that's in the world. Your past has no power against God's presence in your life. And some of you, your past is bad, it's complicated, it's hard. Maybe you need to talk to somebody. There is no shame in that game. If I could do anything today to destigmatize the fact that it may take a third party and God telling you some things through another person. Somebody's like, I just, counseling? Do you really think I'm that bad? I'm like, no, I think you're human and it could really help. Go get some help. Go get, we have care counselors. We have a counseling pastor. Like we really believe in getting some help if you need it. Talk to some. Don't stay chained to your trauma. That's a choice. Don't stay a prisoner of your past. That's up to you. You know, you you can come forward and start fresh with Christ, and it can start today. He, He gives you hope for a future. He gives you healing for your past, and I want you to know when you give your life to Christ, He actually gives you a new identity. Some of you need to enter into the witness relocation program that Jesus is offering. Am I right? I just can't even be, I don't want to be associated with that former life. He says you won't be. Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You can have, your identity is not in what you've done, but in what Christ has done for you. You can have a new identity in Christ. And for as many of us who were baptized with in, into Christ, Galatians says we've been clothed with Christ. We're remade in his image. Your identity is not in your mistakes. It can be rooted in God's mercy. You can make a decision today to make Jesus Lord of your life. That's a real-time, present tense decision that has the power to cancel the sins of the past and prepare a glorious future for you. I want you to make that decision today. I've been doing this a long time, and I, I still have yet to have somebody come up to me and say, hey, you know, I just wanted you to know I gave my life to Christ, and I regret it. Worst decision I ever made. I've been doing this a long time. I'm 101 years old. Wait, no, that was my grandma. I'm, I'm 50 years old. I've been a pastor for 27 years. No one's ever come up to me and said they regret giving their life to Christ, but so many people haven't done it and regretted that they waited, regretted that it took this long. Man, I heard the message and I just thought, well, it's not yet, it's not. Now is the time. Today is the day. If you hear his voice, he said, quit hardening your heart and come forward and say, I want in. I want the new life and I want it to start now. It can happen for you. It happened for me. It happened for so many of us today. It happened for a whole lot of people. And so I'm excited for those of you who came prepared to make that good confession. 
and to start that new walk. But I'm just as excited for the people who didn't come prepared. But right now, Jesus is tapping on the door of your heart. He's saying, it's you. And you may not think you're ready, but I'm ready. I'm ready to bring you home. Let me pray that for us. God, thank you today that your presence is so much greater than our past. Thank you today that your promise is so much greater than our past. Nothing in our past, Lord, has to keep us from your purpose for our life. Thank you today for that truth. Lord, I'm praying for those people who are, are asking for your help to reject the lie that the best is behind them because it's not, it's still to come. Thank you, Jesus. For those who are running from the past, Lord, today, I pray that they have hope that they can be redeemed from their past and it's in you. I thank you that that work that you began, you're just getting started. You're going to carry it to completion. Today, Lord, for those who you are calling and it's their day, would you just make it clear? I pray that everything else that was on their mind and heart when they came in here would leave except the knowledge of who you are and what you're calling them to. I thank you, Lord, that we can, we can put some things in the grave. We are buried with you, Lord. We come into that water dead to sins in the old self. We're buried with you and we're raised to a new life. It says it's through the glo to, to the glory of God the Father. And so we give it all to you, Lord. It's your plan. It's your purpose. And it's beautiful. And we thank you for it. Today, our past, it's not going to disqualify us. But God, our past is just going to display your patience and your power. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Real Life Online. We hope this video encouraged you. As part of our Real Life family, we want you to know that we are here for you. If you need prayer or would like to get connected to any of the resources we mentioned, you can find it all at real.life slash connect. And if you'd like to stay up to date with what God is doing here at Real Life and always know when we go live, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find links to our website and other Real Life resources available for you in the description area below. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with us. We want you to know that God loves you, we love you, and we'll see you next time.